Howdy, this is Tubal Cain again, and this is What Makes It Work, number 26B, the long version of how a scroll chuck works. A scroll chuck is also sometimes called a three-jaw chuck, and the principles will be the same here as a six-jaw chuck, also called a universal chuck. So there are different names for it, but it's really all the same thing. This old three-jaw lathe chuck was donated to me by, by my brother, and it's of uh, questionable value because for several reasons. First of all, it's missing the backing plate, which went on some specialized lathe. It is also missing the other set of jaws, the reverse jaws. They are long gone. There is no chuck key. This, this one does not belong to this chuck. And it is of questionable accuracy. So I'm going to uh, cut it up for the good of the cause. I believe it to be a Bernard made in England. It says made in England here, but the badge is actually missing. But you can see that it's uh, probably the same make as this uh, Bernard chuck made in England. They make a fine line of chucks. I think they got another name added on to that now. Not to be confused with the wonderful Bernard pliers made in the United States. Chucks are made in several different ways. For instance, the jaws on this chuck are reversible by just uh, taking these two screws out and flipping them around. So just the caps are reversible on this one, as opposed to what I'll show you here in a second. Also, lathes have backing, or chucks have backing plates on them to adapt them to whatever lathe spindle you might have. This one uh, fits a uh, a closing lathe, but most of them are threaded on the inside rather than on the outside like this. And as I told you a few minutes ago, this one is missing the backing plate. These jaws are uh, one-piece jaws, and if you want to reverse them, and I told you they're missing, you would install another set of jaws like this. And remember that the jaws are numbered one, two, three, and they always have a serial number on them someplace and that serial number has to match the serial number that is on the chuck. And in this case, the serial number is right there. Sometimes it's out here on the face as well. Also notice that the slots here are numbered 1, 2, and 3. And you must install the jaws in the correct order. And I'm not really going to do that in this video because I've done that in, in many other videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this apart, show you all the different parts, and then off camera I'm going to make a cutaway of this so that you can see very well how it works. The beauty of a self-centering scroll chuck is that you can set your work up so quickly. Now sometimes they're not as accurate as a four-jaw chuck, but one that's in good condition or has uh, been reconditioned or brand new is going to be highly accurate and accurate enough for 98% of what you might do in a shop. As you can see, all three jaws move together. And they do that with the use of a scroll thread, which you'll see in a few minutes. Now let me take this chuck apart. And the, as I said, the backing plate is already off. And that would probably have to be removed in order to take this apart. But these three bigger holes here are what held the backing plate on. Now I've had this chuck apart before and cleaned it thoroughly so I didn't have to deal with the gunk and mess and chips of a used chuck. When I took this apart the first time, there wasn't much dirt in here or chips. Matter of fact, there was no chips in here. This part of the chuck is pretty well sealed. There was grease in here. They need to be greased real well. There's no grease in there now because I didn't want to deal with that. Just some light oil. But, uh, as I said, it's sealed so that you don't have, to, uh, you don't have damage to the gears in here. And these are uh, bevel gears. That's what that part looks like. And that's been uh, 
center punch so I can put it back together in exactly the same manner and that's nice gray iron. In disassembling the first thing I'll do is take all three jaws out. Just run them all the way out and they'll be easily removed. Better chucks like this Bernard, Bernard have a uh, three gears and three uh, chuck slots here making it more convenient to use. On a cheaper chuck such as this one off the Atlas, I assume it's cheaper, there's only one. But that's less parts to manufacture and the benefit is in the purchase of it. Now let me take out these three or uh, yeah these three little screws here and uh, that those are keeper screws that allow you to get these little pinion gears out of here. Now I'll take these screws out real quickly. And there's three. And they look something like that. Matter of fact, they look exactly like that. Now these pinion gears will pop out. And that's what they look like. Less expensive chucks like this that have only one chuck uh, screw or one gear would be constructed like this. Just wouldn't have these extra two holes. You see one gear will do it. And finally, by turning the chuck upside down, the scroll and gear will come out. Now expect a tremendous mess with gear, with uh, grease and chips in here when you take this apart. In fact, this one was absolutely packed with, uh, with chips in the scroll. And that can affect the wear and the accuracy of the chuck. So chucks really should be taken apart periodically and clean because you cannot keep chips from uh, getting in from this side. Matter of fact, uh, they're almost invited to get in there, so clean that up from time to time, although it's a chore. I think you can imagine that, that this is a very expensive part to make because it's a gear on one side and it has uh, thread teeth on the other side. These miter gears or bevel gears fit in there like that, like you saw already. But this is why we call a three-jaw chuck or a six-jaw chuck a scroll chuck. This is a scroll, kind of like a spiral, but it's a thread in a scroll shape. And notice that the jaws, uh, the threads on the jaws match up. Also, I think you can understand why you have to have reverse jaws because you can't reverse the, the, the jaws like this and expect them to go into the scroll. And these are hardened. So that's a very, very expensive part made to tight tolerances, I'm sure. And now, off camera, I intend to take this over to the milling machine. And I've already marked it, but I'm going to mill this part out with the X's on it, on the green lines, and then down to a depth of approximately where you see the green line there. Hopefully that will expose the scroll and all of that so that it'll be interesting to watch it operate, although I think you already understand how these chucks operate, but I'm doing it for the pure pleasure of it, I guess. I've completed a partial cutaway, removing one third, and I think I'll remove the other two thirds too at my leisure here, but this took about 30 minutes. And if you're interested in seeing any of that footage, I put it near the end of the video where I'm actually doing some machining. But let's take a look at it, at how this works now, which is what this video is supposed to be all about.
interesting to watch the scroll. And it is a flat thread. And from the back side, It's two hours later and I have saved the best for last. So this is the skeleton of the three jaw chuck. A lot of milling. And I hope you don't think I defaced this, but let me put it together now and you're really going to be able to see what's happening inside of a universal scroll chuck. When I zoom in on the chuck in this position, you get a good view of the actual threads here where the rubber meets the road. Just like a screw and a nut is what it is. And all three jaws being moved at the same time. Have you ever noticed with a three jaw scroll chuck that sometimes no matter how hard you tighten the work, if it's a, a, a tough job, sometimes it still slips on you no matter how hard you tighten it. If you put a cheater bar on there and bend the chuck key, because there's, there's just a limitation as to how tight you can get a scroll chuck because of the construction. However, when you switch to a four jaw chuck, independent jaw chuck. It's not my purpose here to talk about these but because of the fact that they are Acme screws and we have long engagement here even though it's like only a half nut you can get tremendous pressure with a four jaw chuck and you got four ways to do it compared to a scroll. This is fast and semi-accurate. This is slow unless you're a bomb 79 but uh, you get a lot of force on this especially in very large chucks on large lathes and more accurate get it within a half a thousandth or even closer this is jaw one jaw two and jaw three they must be assembled in the appropriate slot that's also marked and numbered and then uh, by bringing backing these two out and bringing this in so it will catch the scroll as it comes around, now watch closely because this is why you have to uh, assemble these. See the end of the scroll now will come into number two and into number three. And if you are out of sequence, the three jaws will not come together. Hope you liked the video. Leave a favorable comment, watch my 850 other videos. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.
only piece that I didn't have to reduce the chips. 